Hey everybody, what's up? All right, so in this video, what I wanna do is I'm making a follow-up video that I did five years ago that actually got uh, like almost 100,000 views and it was about Blender and I know nothing about 3D modeling, but I made a video about how to just jump into it and it was popular, so I'm gonna try to do it again. Number one, the reason why I do this is I find that when I watch the tutorials with modeling animators that like some of these people are just like such freakazoids about like doing animation and modeling that like it's just beyond my head. Like some of the, the terms that they're using and the features and like it's like, oh, click this button and do a hundred different things to customize your workflow. Anyway, we're doing none of that in this video. But uh, before I can even go into that, this video is sponsored by Linode Cloud Hosting. So if you're looking to host your next website out there, I've been using them for over 10 years. So they're powering my website, CodeHawk.com. So it's basically like a Netflix clone streaming thousands of videos. They also have a YouTube channel. So if you want to learn more about their products directly from them, check that out. They're going to save you a ton of money over Azure AWS. So switching back over to Blender. Why Blender? It's because it's much cheaper than... 3ds max or autodesk maya uh, they're both created by autodesk i think it's going to run you about two thousand dollars a year whereas blender is completely free so i think that wins however like if we're honest unfortunately blender is not used as widely in like hollywood production studios and things like that but i mean what can you expect it is still a free product so why do we need a modeling software it's because this type of crap is really difficult to me to make and it's specifically made in software that allows for this to happen but it's not just simply modeling this and putting a, a uv wrapper or skin on it it's also actually doing the animation itself and how this thing breathes and moves now on the other hand this is the unity game engine and you can do some basic animations in unity itself or in a game engine itself you can move objects from one point to another point you can have an enemy start to like you know slowly make its way towards your game controller character but that is all basic scripting that you do in the game engine whereas like the true effects and movement of the model is going to be done in blender so switching back over to Blender, if we have this start screen, you're probably gonna have a start screen, go ahead and close that out. But the UI on this thing is is daunting. You look at this thing and you're just like, oh my God, like this is gonna take me years. And you're probably right, it's gonna take you years to get really good, but this video is gonna be quick as hell about how to get you to at least be functional. So first things first is we have this square here. If you don't have it, go to add mesh and then add the cube. I call it a square because see, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not a modeler. Like a modeler would call this thing a cube because a cube is different from a square, but to me it's a square. But that said, let's go ahead and look at some of these things. So here's your camera. So you can do, uh, you can control the camera in the animation itself. So you can actually create cutscenes and stuff inside Blender that you would then load with Unity. For those cutscenes to work right and to look good, you have to have lighting. So that's what this is. So you can add all kinds of different perspective lights and, uh, and adjust that as you need it on your model. This is our little square model. And let's go ahead and talk about the most important thing. So this is how you use the mouse in order to use this program. It's, it's somewhat difficult. So th there's gonna be the middle mouse wheel. So that if you scroll up, that's gonna zoom in. You scroll back, that's gonna scroll out. Then you have the pan, which if you click the middle mouse wheel, uh, I'm sorry, this is not panning, this is orbiting. So click the middle mouse wheel. And if you drag left or right, that will orbit around your 3D perspective. If you wanna pan, you're gonna hold shift and then middle mouse wheel and then you can move the mouse left and right and that will pan the screen left and right or up and down. The next thing you need to keep in mind is that there's several different modes when you're dealing with modeling. Uh, one is this object mode. So if you're gonna have the object selected and you're in object mode and you go to the move tool, then you're gonna get these little arrows and you're gonna be able to move the entire model up, down, left, right, wherever you need to go. You should also keep in mind that everything is geometric. So it's X, Y, Z positioning. If you want to rotate, you're going to select the rotate tool with the model selected, and then you can rotate it any way that you want. You could also then scale it too to make it bigger and smaller. The other mode that you're going to use all the time is the edit mode. So the edit mode is going to give you much more control over the model. So this is where we can actually select individual vertices. So I can select little dots, individual ones, and then I can go ahead and use the move tool to move those dots. And then I have much more capabilities of being able to model this thing out how I want. You can also rotate vertices and you're going to get some weird results on a situation like this because um, certain things are not geometrically, po uh, geometrically possible. All right, so the next important thing is that when you're going to edit, uh, you can also select the line tool. So I can actually move individual lines and adjust my model that way.
And then finally, I can select the entire face mode from edit, and you could select the entire face. And like if I need an open box or like an open duct or something like that, I could just say uh, delete the face, and now it's like an empty box. So I could put some cardboard mesh on that. It looks more like a dumpster kind of on it's like tipped over or something, but you get the point. All right, so the next thing to touch on is the timeline. And this is also bringing up a good point that in the top left-hand corner of any sort of window that you're on, you're going to have the option of being able to click that and select a bunch of different things. So there's going to be like your 3D viewport. You could have two of them if you wanted. In fact, you could even have more. If you go to this little uh, where it is a cross, you can drag in new screens. And this part is somewhat finicky, but basically what you have to do is you have to go ahead and try to lower this screen and then go back to the little cross. And then if you actually get it, well, now I just made another one, so that kind of pisses me off. All right, so if I go all the way down here, grab the cross, and then that's going to make that go in. So it, it's a little finicky the way that that works like that. But anyway, just try to make this all the way small. Go to the cross, move it right. There it goes. All right, so that's finicky. So another thing too is that if we're looking at this uh, lower thing and I want to hold the middle mouse wheel to orbit again, if my view gets all jacked up, you can actually use the numbers. Uh, so if your number keypad on the right-hand side and do like one, two, three, four, five, six, and it's going to just give you different perspectives like top, down. And then you could also change your center point of where this thing is focusing. So you could actually center it somewhere else if you wanted to. And that comes into play when you have to orbit certain models, like on an axis, when you're making an arm that bends and things like that. So you sometimes have to adjust that focal point. So going back to our animations, let's go to this uh, top left-hand corner, click that icon, and we're going to go back to the timeline. So if we're in object mode, let's go to object mode, and I want the move tool to be selected. So we have our little sideways dumpster looking thing. And I'm going to click this little uh, auto keying option. So make sure that that is selected. And then now what I can do is I can go ahead and I could say I to insert keyframe um, and or I could just simply move it to whatever sort of keyframe I'm looking for. Uh, so in this case, we'll have it move to like uh, the 10th keyframe here. And then I can just simply move the model and it's going to auto inject this keyframe inside the timeline. So I can start moving this thing around and it'll keep track of where uh, this stuff is and how it plays. All right, so now that we have this uh, animation, what we can do is we can just click uh, and hold with our mouse, left mouse button, and we can just drag along the timeline and see how the animation is looking. You could also play it, so just simply play it and your animation will play. Another thing to note is that there's always a start and end animation. So if I were to export this model and bring it into Unity, it would, it would play for 250 frames. And that means, you know, however many frames per second, if it's 24 or 60 or whatever it is, there's going to be a lot of dead animation where this thing's not doing anything. So see, it's not moving. So you want to go ahead and hover over the end and shrink your timeline down to where the animation stops. Unless uh, assuming you want part of the animation to have it there sitting idle. So now if we actually want to export this so that we can bring it into Unity, we want to go to top, uh, top left-hand corner, go to File, Export, and then we're going to export it as an FBX. And then you just have to select a location. So I'm going to go into this Recents. I have a uh, I'll just qu call it a Dumpster. And then just say Export FBX. And now if we hop over to Unity, you can see we have the dumpster now. And then we also have the animation. So if I click on it, you can actually play the animation in Unity. So you can see it's playing just how we set it up there. So in order to get that to actually work, we could drag it into our screen. But if you play it, it's actually not going to play by default because it needs an animator on it. Plus our lighting is all jacked up. I'm not going to mess with all that. All right, so another cool feature is let's go ahead and extend our animation a little bit. And at this uh, point right here, what we're going to do is we're going to say object and we're going to add and we're going to add this little monkey. And we're going to position this thing over our dumpster because I want it to, uh, and then we're going to have it face us. Let's turn this thing around. All right, so he should be kind of situated over the dumpster. And then what we want to do is we're going to, if we have them on object mode, we can go to object and then there's this quick effects option and we're going to make him explode. All right. Um, so here you can see then when the animation is played, but unfortunately it didn't fall into our dumpster. Oh, it just fell right through. 
So another thing to keep in mind is if we play the animation, you can see that this is showing only the animation for the monkey. So it's because we have the monkey currently selected. So if we selected the dumpster, we now see the dumpster's animation timeline. And again, we could just go ahead and export this right into Unity by going FBX, and we're just going to override it. All right, so the next thing I want to touch on is UV unwrapping. This is something that it seems like, I don't want to say this, it's something that seems like nobody can ever really come up with something because it, it's always like here's some tutorial it's four hours long on uv unwrapping and it's so difficult but anyway let's go ahead and take a look at that here so where we have our timeline we're going to go ahead and change this to the uv editor and uv editing is all about taking the face of like all the faces of the model and then making them all flat like as if a piece of paper and then you can draw on that piece of paper and you can make very very advanced drawings and textures and such and the model is going to be smart enough to be able to wrap the model back the way it was unfolded. That's called UV unwrapping. It is a very difficult process uh, depending on how sophisticated the model is. In this demonstration, we're just going to simply look at how to unwrap. So if I go and I have it in object mode and then I go to edit mode and all the vertices are selected, it should automatically be unwrapped on such a basic shape like this. So you can see it cut the seams for us and it unwrapped it pretty well. So what I can do with this image is I can then go uh, export this as an actual image. And it's all the way down here. So one of those confusing things where it doesn't even give you the thing, there's a little arrow. So if you hover over the arrow, it'll actually scroll down. But here it is, export UV layout. And we're, we're just going to go ahead and export it to the same location. I'll just say cube PNG. That's fine. All right, so now if I were to open that into Photoshop, you can see that the image is all nice and laid out for me. So whatever color box I want it to be, um, I can go ahead and make that, but it's probably going to be like a brownish color, right? So we're going to, what can brown do for you? Uh, we're going to put that in here. And then we can even put some effects from within. Uh, go to the filter gallery. And I could probably put some sort of like a, like a grain on there. Yeah, that looks like a cardboard box, actually. A film grain. No, that's not going to work out. Yeah, we'll just say rough pastel, so that'll change the appearance. So now when you go to wrap the box again, it's going to have this realistic-looking box texture. All right, so if you save that in Photoshop and you go and export this box now, we can go ahead and use it in Unity. So in Unity, I'll go ahead and drag my cardboard box in here. And then I'm going to take my image and I want to make sure I hover over the right part of the model so it'll be applied and by default we're not gonna be able to see it very well uh, based on where it is in our screen so our, our scene's gonna look like that because there's no light or anything uh, let's go ahead and add a light real quick and let's do a spotlight we'll just do a friggin directional light whatever all right so um, here we can go ahead and adjust the intensity and all that stuff, but I just want to show you now we have a realistic looking uh, box with custom texture. All right, everybody, that's going to wrap up this quick start video with Blender and really just getting started with modeling with Unity. I feel like there's so many tutorials, like I said, most of them are daunting. Hopefully this was just quick. You spend 15 minutes and, and can start me messing around with it. Also, if you're learning to code, check out my website, CodeHawk.com. I got courses on all the latest web development plus more, and there's going to be more added all the time. So make sure you check that out. All right, everybody, have a good day. Take care.